Welcome to 1.1, the real number system. So the real number system is um, the number system we're most familiar with. And it's really what we've been using all along. And uh, there's a diagram that goes with it, and it looks a little like this. And it's composed of natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, rational numbers on one side. So that's on this left side. And on the right side, we have irrational numbers. I'm going to give you some examples. Um, I'm going to start with the smallest set. So the natural numbers, think of the numbers that you would count with. So usually when we count, we don't start at zero. Like if I counted the number of sheep in my yard, I wouldn't say zero sheep, then one sheep. I would say one, two, three, etc. So that's the set of natural numbers. All of the natural numbers are also part of the whole numbers. And you can see that over here, the natural numbers is completely inside the whole number set. The whole numbers just adds the number zero to this set. Okay, then the integers are both all of the positives, zero and the opposite. So the integers includes our negative numbers as well. And then the rational numbers, um, I have a definition for that. That would be numbers. That's my abbreviation for numbers. That can be written as a fraction. And we'll spend a little time on that after this. But for example, clearly 3 over 5 is a fraction, so that would be a rational number. Uh, but 1.75 is also a number that can be written as a fraction. By repeating decimals, so one that we know really, really well, that would be um, one-third if you wrote it as a fraction. So those are all numbers that you can write as fractions and so they're part of the rational numbers. Now notice that all of the natural, all of the whole, all of the integers are part of our rational number set. Okay, so a negative four can be written as a fraction. There you go. Okay, on the other side we have irrational numbers. So irrational numbers then are numbers that cannot be written as a fraction. And some numbers that we're fairly familiar with would be, for example, pi, um, but also a lot of square roots. So the square root of 7, I cannot write that as a fraction, okay? because I'm not really sure what the square root of 7 is. And we'll look at that later. But the square root of 7, I know the square root of 4 would be 2, and the square root of 9 would be 3, so it's somewhere between that. Um, so then the question I have is, what about the square root of 16? Well, the square root of 16 is 4, so that is not an irrational number. The square root of 16, which would be 4, would actually make it a natural number. So the square root of 16 is a natural number, and whole, and integer, and rational. Okay? Um, so on occasion, you'll be asked to qualify numbers or to, uh, to label them. So if I gave you the number 2.4 and I asked you to tell me what kind of number that is, okay, you would look, I would look from the inside out. So I know it's not natural. I know it's not whole. It's not an integer. It is a rational number. Okay, and you can abbreviate this way. So And then clearly, it's a real number. If I asked you to uh, label what the number... 4 over 5 would be, uh, well, we just did a rational number, right? I was thinking of something else. How about 4 over 2? Well, 4 over 2 is actually 2. So if I look at 2, 2 would be a natural number, right? It's also a whole number then. That makes it an integer as well. It makes it rational and real. So you have to list all of the groups that it can fit into. Okay, one more. How about the square root of 3? Well, the square root of 3, I'm not really sure what it is. So that's irrational and real. Okay. So part of um, what you have to do then is also be able to go from decimals to fractions. So this sort of falls into the whole rational number kind of thing. Uh, that's not the one that I wanted. Let's do this one. 
So converting decimals into fractions. So there are two types. If you have a terminating decimal, so one that ends, then you would go through the following process. Okay. Uh, the first thing is you would count the number of decimals. So count the number of decimal spots. So in this case, there are three. So one, two, three, right? So there are three decimal spots. And then this number becomes the number of zeros in your denominator. So I'm going to write this as a decimal. I need one, two, three zeros, and then I'm going to put a one in front. And then to finish, you just place the original number, place the decimal in the numerator. Without the decimal. So 2, 4, 5. So 245 divided by 1,000 would give you 0 0.245. Um, you would have to reduce this if it was on a test or a quiz. But for time's sake, we're going to move on. How about this one then? So count the number of decimals. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I have 6 decimals. So I need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros, and then a 1. And then this goes in the top. So 5, 6. Notice that I left out the decimal. And you just... And there you go. And then this one would also be reducible, because that's even, and so is this. So you could divide it by 2. Uh, hopefully, if I give you a test or a quiz, I wouldn't give you a number so awkward. So try to be a little nicer then. So repeating decimals. Sort of starts the same. You, you count the number of repeating decimals. So that's step 1. Okay, so we'll call that step one. So the number of repeating decimals here is one. So it's three, three, three. So the number, I don't care that there are more threes here. The three is what's being repeated. So that is one repeating decimal. Okay, so step two then is use this number as a factor of 10. and write an equation. So we're going to say 1 times 10 is 10x is equal to, and then here you would multiply also by 10. So initially we're going to say that this is x, and then 10x would be 3.33, and then repeating. Okay, and then the last step is Subtract the two equations and then solve for x. So let's see, what do we do here? So that's 1x and that's 0 0.333 and then repeating. And then here you can sort of see why this works. Now the next number here would also be a 3, right? So every single one of these cancels each other when you start subtracting. Because 3 minus 3 is 0, so that's 0, that's 0, that's 0. And then here, you would get 3. And 10 minus 1 is 9x. And then you solve for x by dividing, so and 3 over 9 is 1 over 3. So there you go. And that one clearly we knew, but it also works with numbers that are slightly more difficult. So this is what we called x. And now let's see how many repeating I have two repeating decimals. So the factor 10 twice, so 10 times 10 is 100. So 100x is 2, 3, 4, and then 5, 4 moves, and then I still have two of those here. And then repeating. x was the number 2, 3, 4, so 234, and then repeating 5 fours. So, zeros again, zero, 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 zero. So everything behind the decimal cancels, and 4 minus 4 happens to be zero. 5 minus 3 is 2, 4 minus 2 is 2. 
So 2, 3 is over here. And then that is 99x. So then x would be 23,220 divided by 99. Um, unfortunately, that thing reduces. Uh, one way you can check for divising, dividing by 3, for example, would be to um, add these. So 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 4 is 9, and 9 is divisible by 3, and 18 is divisible by 3. Um, and some people know that if that adds to 9 and this is divisible by 9, you can shortcut that. But if you divide this out, you would actually get this. And if you check one more time, it's 14 plus 4 is 18. That's still divisible by 3. And 33 is divisible by 3. So this is 2, 5, 8, 0 divided by 11. Okay, so because that number, then, if you wanted to check on a calculator, should give you the original repeating decimal. Okay, thank you.